please welcome Greg Opalka. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hopefully, everyone enjoyed a nice lunch. Because, um, you know, want to be nice and comfortable as we talk about something as exciting as data migration, right? Um, so when you think about data migration, it's like moving into a new house, right? Where you have this brand new space, it's all clean, it's all open, and you're trying to decide what am I going to bring, what am I going to put in this new space of mine? And you start packing up your old space and you start looking at your old data and you're like, okay, what am I going to bring? I'm going to bring, you know, definitely the essentials, right? The things you use every day, things that are current. And then you start to think about that box of trinkets that's in the back of your closet that, you know, I can't get rid of that. And then, you know, you let your kids start picking what they want to bring with them and, no, I can't get rid of that. And before you know it, you have a whole trailer full of things that you really don't need, but you might need them someday. And what if I want to look back and reflect on that? And before you know it, your whole new clean house is full of all this stuff that you didn't think you'd need. Well, the same thing can happen if you're not careful with data migration. Uh, so I want to walk you through our journey, um, a little bit of what we did, how we partnered with Synity to take a different approach to data migration. I'm going to start back where, you know, not many people know of Gentex. We're not a huge, you know, Fortune 500 company. We're uh, about 1,000 people worldwide. Uh, we've been in business for a little over 130 years now. Started off in the late 1890s as a silk manufacturer. Um, got into personal protective equipment. Our big claim to fame is we produce ballistic helmets that protect our military folks. We produce air crew helmets that protect our pilots. Um, and we really, we provide products that protect those that protect us. So that's our claim to fame. Um, but along the lines, we, or along the years, we grew um, through acquisitions, like many companies do. Um, as early as the, the 70s, we started acquiring smaller businesses and merging into one. Some of those, we did a good job of consolidating data. Others, we let them stay in their own system and kind of operated multiple systems and consolidated everything at a high level. Over the, the course of the years, we grew, grew our global footprint, um, started off in a small coal mining town up in northeastern Pennsylvania, expanded to New Hampshire and Boston, California, three sites in the UK, and a small site in Australia. Over the years, the data got globally disjointed. Um, the sites in different countries especially operated on a different system, um, and we didn't have good insight. It was very difficult to dig into really the details at a high level. Something our CEO would be interested in um, was not very easy. So we made a decision that we needed to make a change. As we continue to grow and move into the new era of Gentex, what can we do to have better data insights, make better business decisions, and uh, really prepare ourselves for future growth? So summer of last year, or, well, summer of 22 at this point, we made the decision to move to a new ERP system. We started that by doing some data gathering, built a business case, why do we need this? Uh, once we finalized what the requirements were, um, in December we down-selected to an SI um, and decided at that time that we needed the help of somebody who, whose expertise was in data. And that's when we met and partnered with Synity. Um, and it's been quite a journey since. June of 23, after all the agreements were signed and the plan was in place, we really kicked off the project. Uh, we had the team activation, data activities at this point were in full swing. Uh, so one of the things we learned talking early was the sooner we could get a jump on data, the better. So actually back in uh, the end of 22, we had teams looking at opportunities to consolidate and start put governance plans in place. So how are we going to handle the data um, in the new system? Starting in June of 23, we started looking at mock data loads. So what kind of, um, how well was our cleansing working at that point? Through the ADMM tool, we were able to rapidly get cleanse reports, look at what our errors were, and target and um, attack those errors and those data defects early on and frequently. We worked for about a year. I'm happy to report in April, earlier this year, we went live in our three UK locations. Um, certainly faced some data challenges there. Um, our UK data is now centralized. It was four systems. We've migrated into a single source of truth now in SAP. 
Um, and then at the same time shifted focus and said, okay, let's apply all those lessons learned that we had in the UK into the US. And what do we do from a data perspective for our US? Um, from a business perspective, our UK makes up around 30% of our global business, where the UK, or the, I'm sorry, the UK makes up around 30% of our global business, with the US being the majority of it. So a lot more data, a lot more opportunities um, on the US side. So we're definitely applying the lessons learned from the UK. And now we're going, moving forward towards a go live in the US uh, in October of 24. We're gonna have all four US sites go live at once. US data centralized, um, and then really go through the post go live issue resolution. So some of the things that led us down this journey, you know, we're, we're a full greenfield implementation. We're coming from a bunch of legacy systems migrating into one. Identified the need for better business intelligence, quicker business insights. Um, this is really what drove um, our decision down this path. So a little bit about our data landscape. So as I mentioned, we had quite a few legacy systems um, across our enterprise that all, the goal was to feed everything into um, one single instance of S4. So five legacy sources comprised of around 30 years of um, data. So as you can imagine, over 30 years in these five legacy systems, you can accumulate a lot of those boxes in the back of the closet, right? Um, we had no enterprise governance strategy. So we had no plan in place for how to manage data across the enterprise. We were very siloed in that approach. So each site kind of operated independently on how they handled data. Um, so things weren't, weren't very clean to say. Um, to give you an order of magnitude, we had about 20,000 SKUs in the UK that we, need, we needed to migrate over. And we're looking at about 40 to 60,000 SKUs in the US. Once we finalize our relevancy checks, we'll see how that finally turns out. But it's somewhere in that range. When we started looking at how do we do this, um, it was a daunting task. So one of the things that we really found beneficial was the ADMM tool from Synity. What that allowed us to do was take those five sources of data and map those to a single source, and that, that new source being the Synity tool. Working with the Synity team, we identified all the mapping strategies, came up with the best way to take all of those disjointed sources of data and move them into a single platform, which would then be our single source to move into our new clean house of SAP S4. Along the way, um, we faced some challenges in our initial um, go live. So we had deprioritized data. Like many companies before us fell into the trap of, we gotta focus on the system design, focus on the mapping session, or focus on the design sessions, focus on discovery. And it was, well, you know, what about data mapping? Well, we'll get to that. What about data cleansing? Well, we'll get to that. Before you knew it, the get to that became the driving force in our project. Um, so data being deprioritized was probably one of our biggest issues that we faced. The second was incomplete mock loads. So in every test cycle, we set out with a plan that we were going to do a full mock load. So before we went into system testing, we said, okay, we're gonna do a, a mock load. Well, before you know it, once again, data got deprioritized and we started some of the uh, pre-validation work and then before you know it, close enough, let's just load it and run the test. And we loaded the, the, the data for the, the situ, or for the system testing, and we moved on, and we never went back and finished. Then we were faced with scope creep. Very late in the project, we identified, hey, maybe we need this module, or maybe we need this, we want to add this. Well, that led to new data elements, new data objects that weren't in the original scope, that weren't mapped from the beginning, that we now had to go back and say, well, how are we going to map that? Maybe we had data in our legacy system, maybe it was something new that we thought we needed. Um, but those late design changes really drove an impact to our data as well. And then another big one, errors that we found at GoLive. So inevitably, we went live, we did what we, you know, we, we set out with a plan. Uh, we had to meet that target go live date and we made the decision that it was better to go with the 90% solution than to delay. Um, that led to inevitable data errors. Um, and then the post data cleanup. 
So what did we learn and what are we going to do different this time around? So we, we had the opportunity of, because our project was broken into two waves, wave one focused on the UK, wave two focused on the US, we, we took a step back and we said, well, if we go through the same steps and the same process that we did in the UK, the US being a much larger business, you know, we have almost 700 employees in the US versus our 200 in the UK, um, we're going to be, the problems were going to be exponentially bigger. So we decided we're going to take a data first approach. So data became our first priority. Uh, we added additional mock data cycles. So by using the ADMM tool, without even loading anything into SAP, we're able to generate cleanse reports, able to look to see how our engineering teams and how our finance team and our procurement team is doing, looking at that legacy data and making those cleansing changes up front. And we're getting much quicker results. And we're able to provide feedback to the users, to the business users, to say, hey, this is where you need to focus your cleansing activities. This is what you need to focus on for the next two weeks before we do the next cleanse report. And allowing those, those teams more additional time to do that data cleansing. We're looking at enhanced data governance um, or enhanced change governance when it comes to data. So we now have a, a change board. Um, any changes that we need to make to the project, we're looking at it from a comprehensive standpoint. Uh, we're standing up a, an enterprise data governance team um, that is going to be responsible for master data. Um, and then data focused design sessions. So now at every design session that we have, we have representatives from the data team there and we start to talk about mapping earlier and we talk about design decisions that are driving data earlier and bringing the data to the forefront of the project. And then lastly, um, additional cleansing. So with the US, um, because we have a few extra months now be be between where we are and go live, we've decided we're going to spend some time up front and do some additional cleansing cycles. So we're going to use that ADMM tool that Synity brought for us. And we're going to give the business users additional time to go through and cycle through that data and look at it a few extra times because we know errors found at Go Live, had we fixed those six months in advance, um, we wouldn't have had half the, half the issues that we have at our Go Live. So from our journey, um, from what I can share, um, the biggest the biggest benefits I could give you or the biggest advice I could give somebody starting off on a journey is definitely keep data first. All right, I know the, the folks from Synity will echo that. You know, you see it, you see it at their booth. Um, if you're interested in hearing more, they're hosting a cocktail hour later. Um, they'll be more than happy to share their story. Uh, but definitely data first. Always approach your, your design sessions um, as you're going through your brainstorming and your, your mapping sessions looking at what you can do to get that data to the business users for cleansing um, earlier rather than later. Um, and the more energy you put into data up front, the better off the, the overall project's gonna be. So we learned a lot um, in our initial wave. We're learning even more as we go through our second wave. And that's a little bit about our story. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to chat with you offline or um, Go through any other things you may have. Thank you all. <laughs>